We're going to be looking at two questions for this video because they're linked together. The answer for question 1 is supported by the answer in question 2. But let's start from the top. The author of passage 1 indicates which of the following about the use of screen-based technologies. Okay, so this question stem tells us that we're dealing with an explicit info question. How do I know? It's the phrase, the passage or the author indicates. In other words, the passage actually says one of these four things in our choices and doesn't actually say the other three. Uh, let's remember that passage one is about how surfing the internet changes our brains. It's right there in the title of the passage, the web shatters focus, rewires brains. Okay, let's take a look at these choices. So, okay, the author ind indicates which of the following about the use of screen-based technologies. A. Uh, it should be thoroughly studied. Does the author say it should be thoroughly studied? Not sure. Let's move on. Uh, choice B. It makes the brain increasingly rigid. Do they say that explicitly? The passage said that it changes our brains, maybe not always for the better, but I don't think rigidity was mentioned. The choice C. It has some positive effects. Was there anything positive that the author said about screen time? Maybe. Let's leave that in. And D, it should be widely encouraged. Does the author say that more screen time should be encouraged? This choice is the most positive of the bunch, and the title alone tells us that the author definitely has some reservations. So we can, I feel pretty confident about crossing this one off. Okay, so I'm leaning towards C. I might want to check out A, but if I can find a mention of some positive effects anywhere in the passage, I'm done. I can circle C and move on. So let's take a look. Let's go back to the passage. And you can see in my pre-read, I, I put little pluses by everything that was positive. So we've got certain cognitive skills are strengthened, a group of young people had significantly boosted the speed with which they could shift their visual focus, uh, web browsing strengthens brain functions. Those are some positive effects. So for me, I've, I've seen enough. On test day, I would circle choice C and move on. Throughout the reading test, we need to be careful with choices like A. Uh, these choices sound completely reasonable. Yes, it should be thoroughly studied. However, we can't choose choices based on whether or not a choice sounds reasonable or makes sense. Lots of wrong choices sound reasonable and make sense. Indeed, they are written that way. Our job is to find the choice that actually answers the question being asked. In the case of explicit info questions, it's the choice that is actually mentioned in the passage that we have to find. Right, it's called the evidence-based reading and writing test for a reason. The answers are all based on evidence that you can find in the passage. Okay, let's move on to the second question, which asks, which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? So this is a citing textual evidence question. One of these choices is going to support the answer to the question you just answered. The other choices won't. There are two ways to approach a question like this, and I'll run through both of them. Plan A. Support your answer to question one. This assumes we've answered the previous question by looking for evidence, and we feel confident about that answer. The chances are good we'll find the evidence we used to answer the first question just sitting in the choices. And plan B is test the choices. If I'm not sure of my answer to the first question, I can use the choices in the second question to help figure out the answer to the first question. So I'll do them both. Here's plan A in action. All right, so when I did the first question, I figured out that the author said some good stuff about screen time in the first paragraph. Let's see if there's a choice that matches the evidence I found. Okay, so choice A, lines two to three, starting with certain. Certain cognitive skills are strengthened by our use of computers and the net. This is our answer, right? It matches my, my answer from the first question. And on test day, I would just circle that and move on. Do you see how fast that can be if you were able to find evidence to support your answer when you were doing the first question? Okay, so let me erase my work. Let me pretend I don't know the answer to question one. And let's start fresh. Now, remember that plan B is for when I'm not sure what the answer to the first question is. I know for sure that one of the choices here in the second question is going to answer the first question, so I just need to find it. I'm going to test the choices one by one and ask myself, does this answer the first question? In order to do that, I'm going to need to make sure that I have the first question stuck firmly in my head. Does this tell me something about screen time? I'm going to use this test on each of the choices in the second question. If it doesn't have anything to do with the use of screen-based technologies, then it can't be right. So, which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? Lines 2 to 3, certain, net. So, certain cognitive skills are strengthened by our use of computers and the net. Does this have to do with screen time? Yes. Certain cognitive skills are strengthened by it. Now, I can look at that first question and see if I find a match. All right. 
Oh, hello, choice C. Well, it looks like we may have a winning pair. But let's apply our test to the other choices in the second question just to make sure. So I'm going in looking at choice B, lines 19 to 20, starting with but, ending with smarter. But it would be a serious mistake to look narrowly at such benefits and conclude that the web is making us smarter. Does this tell me anything about screen time? Yeah, it says it's maybe not all good, so let's scan the choices of the first question for a match. Thoroughly studied, increasingly rigid, some positive effects, widely encouraged. I'm going to say no, there's no connection to another choice here, so we can cross it off. Choice C, lines 20 to 24, beginning with in A. In a science article, here we are, published in early 2009, prominent developmental psychologist Patricia Greenfield reviewed more than 40 studies on the effects of various types of media on intelligence and learning ability. Does this tell us anything about screen time? Not really, it just tells us that Greenfield reviewed lots of studies. Does that have a match in the first question? Let's go back. Sort of. Choice A tells us that it should be studied, but that's not the same as a scientist reviewed lots of studies, so we can cross it off. Finally, choice D, lines 24 through 26, starting with she. All right, here's line 24. She concluded that every medium develops some cognitive skills at the expense of others. Does this tell me anything about screen time? Nah, not... Really, this is kind of broad, not specifically about screen time. It's about every medium. I, I, in fact, I wouldn't really say this is about screen time at all. So we can cross it off. And that means choice A is our answer. Let's recap plan B because it takes some practice to get right. The key is to lock the first question in your head as a test for the choices of the second question. You saw me do that when I asked each choice, do you tell me anything about screen time? I carefully applied that question to each of the choices. Only one of them told me something, and then I found a match in the choices of the first question. I hope this video gave you some clear strategies for approaching paired questions that ask you to cite textual evidence. Good luck out there. You've got this.